X-ray tomography, which is also developing in this direction, in the electron tomography. So when I'm looking back what has changed with FIB tomography, so one thing today is certainly uh, improved stability. So a couple of years ago when you wanted to do imaging at 10 nanometer resolution, you immediately run into problems with drift. So we had to implement drift correction. For this purpose, we had to do <coughs> scripting. Nowadays, this is all fully automatic uh, standard solutions. Also, uh, very much improved is the detection for the low KV backscatter imaging. Uh, contrast is becoming better, less charging, and uh, very important, less noise that is a skin possibly to do faster imaging, which is important to, to go to large cubes. And also, with the Einbild, the milling capabilities are better to go to, uh, I would say, higher precision and higher milling rates. This also allows us to do larger cubes. So FIP tomography developed from, I would say, cubes with hundreds hundreds or hundreds of images up to thousands of images. And I think this is important because with 3D imaging all this repre get, getting representative analysis is very important. So maintaining the good resolution but analyzing larger volumes is really important. Once we have acquired the images, segmentation of the recognition is important. This was already covered. This is one aspect which was not covered when we do particle analysis, probably also for other features. The effect of boundary truncations becomes important. So correction of boundary truncations, something which is covered in this paper. Uh, I also recently looked at segmentation procedures of uh, like this uh, nickel CGO porous material. When we zoom in more, we see that actually the boundaries are transition zones, diffuse transition zones. And in fine grained materials, and I just take out this diffuse transition zone that it makes up, can make up to 50 volume percent. And so the way we distribute this can have a large effect on, on our results. So I described this in a recent paper, how we uh, distribute these pixels with, a, with an algorithm which is independent of the thresholds. And then uh, once we have identified our uh, phases, we can start doing quantification. First order parameters composition is not a problem, but particle and pore sizes is quite challenges. And thereby, actually, uh, it's important to realize that what we are measuring is very much depending on the geometric concepts. And uh, we have done, get me the colleague, we have done some work on these different ways, concept of what the particle size is. So we are, we are distinguishes continuous particle sizes where we consider uh, at the size distributions in a continuous network or discrete particle sizes where we try to identify discrete objects and there's an algorithm that does splitting and this pornex. Now the splitting at the pornex, uh, so when we can do that it's uh, the splitting correctly, this will give us uh, like discrete objects, I call this approach, the Swiss cheese type uh, view of what the pore or particle is. But very often we, we do have uh, complex uh, continuous uh, features, so the splitting to find this, uh, this next actually is not that easy. And it's also not the one zero solution, but it depends on the curvatures and so on. And there's actually no real physical solution or theoretical solution for that. So we have in this algorithm for splitting a k-parameter, which uh, 
then when we increase the gate parameter, it's simply taking a, a lower degree of curvature as a <coughs> criteria for splitting. So you see here the nickel for a nickel CGO uh, uh, anode, which is here without splitting, you see some, some of the particles like the color. So we, you have a very low amount of particles, and then you get the step because everything is connected together. So 99% are connected When we start splitting, uh, then according to, the, to this k parameter, you shift this curve to the left. And uh, so actually the question is what is a correct splitting? And I did a parametric study. The results are published in here. But actually one can say with a k value of 0.6, you get the realistic texture. But of course, uh, yeah, the advantage when we do this discrete, this discrete particle size is that we have actually the same perception as when we do uh, powder processing. So we have discrete objects, or when we do microstructural modeling, we're looking at this discrete objects. But actually, in in reality, we have a continuum, so a continuous network structure, and how we can get um, size distribution information from continuous network structure. Uh, here we are adapting geometrical concepts from vector intrusion. So it's not a fuel cell, but just to show you the principle, we can simulate the intrusion of the porosimus or, or in the mercury intrusion in the pore. So we're simulating an increase of the pressure. So smaller and smaller pores are filled. But actually, the pore network is only intruded when we reach this breakthrough diameter. Then immediately, the whole thing is flush. So that's the so-called ink bottle effect. Now, the advantage is when we have 3D data, we can correct this modeling for this ink bottle effect. And we can get the continuous, the correct continuous PSD. So, this is illustrated here. So we start, we actually look for the maximum sizes in our network, and that's the point where we start the intrusion. So we are not intruding from outside, like in physical mercury porosity, but we start in a local maximum, and then we are coming from both sides to the corner, so we don't get the input. So that's the way how we uh, it's described in this paper uh, how we can actually get size distribution information from continuous network structure and then uh, second order parameters we have heard a lot of that uh, these nice publications people that are here and then we uh, can apply this actually the pit homography data this is a cube with uh, about 2000 slices and we, it has a great microstructure we have here four four zones first of all the composition you see how the nickel increases from over here we see the electro electrolyte here is current collector so nickel is increasing in this direction and same direction CGO is decreasing. Now we can compare that with uh, cumulative size distribution curve. So we see as the nickel is increasing from year to year, uh, the average size is also increasing. And in a complementary way, as the CGO is decreasing, uh, the average size is So uh, actually we get, the, for both phases, we get the correlation between volume fractions and average uh, radius. This is not the case for the pore size. Pore size remains quite stable, except here we have, at the interface, we have lower pores. So that we were starting with the same powders for powder size distributions, and actually this correlation shows us uh, 